Okay, welcome. And here we go. I'm going to <clears throat> talk a little bit about how to set up a, I think, pretty sound defensive base. Um, I am going to turn off the sound effects here so that you can hear me because I recorded this once before and the sound effects were so loud they drowned me out. So <laughs> that doesn't make for a very helpful video. All right, um, I'm going to try to keep these videos pretty short and sweet so that, um, you know, essentially just one or two relevant principles are being discussed um, and that hopefully will allow you to take away some you know, more tangible things from them. So what I want to talk about in this one is base structure and um, how to set up um, these sort of murder holes um, in your in your base. So let's talk about structure first. Um, the structure that I use for my war base as well as for my sort of standard base or my raiding base is a symmetrical structure. Um, it's not obviously perfectly symmetrical because, you know, you have some odd-numbered structures, right? There's only one fort, there's only one silo, there's only one rocket arsenal if you're Cold War age or higher, um, so on and so on, right? But generally speaking, I've, I start with my town center in the middle of the base, um, and then from there I place my anti-aircraft guns all around that, and I will acquire a new one soon as my library research continues in the space age. Um, and then from there, I place my mortar towers, and then I try to, you know, things get a little bit less symmetrical from there, but I try to, generally speaking, keep my towers around the outside. Um, I have my inner wall set up and my outer walls set up so that um, opponents have to chew through not one wall, but two walls, and then if they're going to go through the other sides, right, they might have to chew through two more walls. Um, you know, the idea is to slow them down. That's a different video, though. I don't want to get too much into um, using the clock as, your, as part of your defense. So, um, anyways, symmetrical base. Right? It should be more or less as difficult to hit it from the dock side as it is from the open side, as it is from the embassy side, as it is from, or sorry, as it is from the Alliance Gate side and the embassy side, right? You want that base to be, um, or at least I do, I want my base to be equally difficult no matter where my opponents are coming from. Okay, and the second principle I wanna communicate is these murder holes, and I'll move these out of the way so that we can better see this. All right, so what I do is I have an intentional gap in my wall that I fill with traps, one barbed wire or caltrop trap, one landmine or spike trap, depending on what level you are, or sorry, what age you are, and then some of these ambush traps. Um, I always go with a minimum of two. Sometimes, um, if I look at a different one here, there's three down at this one. Um, you know, this one over here has got a decoy so, you know, some, sometimes there's variation for me, but generally speaking, this is the setup that I like to use. And then on the other side of that is a bastion with an anti-tank gun. And then I usually try to flank that with a tower, and I usually try to anticipate with my SAM sites that planes are going to come after this. Um, you can always pretty much assume, again, this is probably a different video, that planes are going to come after your silo. So setting up SAM sites is a good idea there. The reason why I have my SAM sites so far away is because um, the uh, Space Shuttle Wonder, which deactivates traps, if you keep your traps too clustered, you'll, it'll hit a lot of them. So these are out of range if they're going to deactivate the traps directly around my, SAM, uh, around my missile silo, they will miss these. Um, so that's, that's why that's happening. Anyways, again, that's a, maybe a, a different video, so let me, let me stay focused here. So what, the reason why I have this gap is because when they deploy troops, and most people who hit my base, Detroit Ploops, deploy troops on this side, they're going to automatically go towards the gap in the wall. The AI is such that they like to not try to go through walls if they don't have to. So they'll go here, they'll hit these traps, it's going to weaken them, slow them down, it's going to give my anti-tank gun some time to shoot them up, 
going to give my tanks time to deploy, going to give my tower time to shoot. I have my um, Tubman research done, so my houses will be working on deploying troops as well at that point. And it's going to slow them down, right? And it's going to take time off the clock, which is a good way to get a win. Or at the very least, put pressure on the other player who's trying to cut through your base as quick as they can. <clears throat> All right, so I want to watch um, a replay. I think that will help to demonstrate some of these principles and why they're effective. So this guy, um, I don't think this is particularly sound strategy, although this used to be the strategy I used when I was industrial age. Um, but yeah, um, he's trying to blow up my silo before he deploys anything. This is just a big time sink, in my opinion. Um, he's burning up a lot of time, a lot of war tactics, and a lot of plane hit points that I don't really think he's getting that much back out of it, right? I mean, what he's gaining is he gets to deploy all his ground troops at once in roughly the same area, but, you know, when I talk about attacking videos and tactics, um, hopefully you'll see that that's not really that big of an advantage. But anyways, he's deploying a full army, three generals, plus mercenaries, um, and he's not going to get very far in my base. I think he ends up with like 32% damage. Um, so they've gone right for my murder hole, as you can see. Um, so that's worked exactly as planned. They're going to try to cut through this bastion now. All the while, they're getting, you know, sapped by some of my other structures. He's pretty much burned up all of his planes at this point on my cluster of anti-aircraft guns. He's about to lose the rest of his planes here. Yeah, cutting them down. He's got one plane left now. He's got a minute left in this fight. He's hitting my second layer of traps in here that I keep by my silo. Here goes his last plane. Yep, you wasted him. He got almost nothing out of his planes, really. He finished off a silo. He took out an anti-tank gun, a few troops. But for eight for eight fighters, that's or seven fighters, I don't remember how many he has. That's, that's not much. Um, all right. Yeah, he's getting chewed up from the other side of this wall, right? These guys are now going to go back out the same bastion to try and hit these targets on the other side of this wall, um, except he's rallied them to take out the, the oil well. So they're just running around, caught on this um, barbed wire, caught on the bastion. My troops now are starting to deploy. He's, he's really not being effective at this point, and it's just chewing up all this time off the clock. I mean, he ends up going out before time expires, but um, even so, he would have run out of time. 32% damage for 8 fighters, 14 bazooka troops, 3 heavy tanks, 3 generals, and a full complement of mercenaries and tactics, and a silo. That's not very good. <laughs> I mean, he, he, he got some decent resources, because I'm oil rich right now, as I'm waiting on my armory to finished doing some upgrades which is taking forever but um yeah right i mean he's he's essentially done a very poor job of hitting my base i think if you don't even do 50 percent damage to somebody's base you, you basically should feel bad <laughs> about what you did but that's how that works right um it's all about sort of taking time off the clock it's all about making predictable what the enemy is going to do um, so that you can plan for that with your defenses, right? If I know that my enemy's troops are going to come here, and then that they're going to move towards a bastion, and then they're going to have to come through all this, like, I know that I've taken probably at least a minute off the clock with just two traps and a bastion, just just in the time it's going to take them to move, right? Let alone what my defenses are going to do while they're trying all that. So it can be pretty effective, and it's, you know, it's a similar story no matter where he hits me from, right? If he hits me on this corner, up here, over there, down here, um, he's going to run into the same issue. So, Okay, so I'm going to cut this video there. I think that's uh, a pretty good illustration of how that technique works or why that structure is effective. Um, if you have further questions about it, I'd be happy to talk more about that. Um, if you like this video and um, want to see more stuff like this, please let me know. If there's other specific things you'd like me to do a video about, please let me know. Uh, essentially, if there's any feedback that you want to provide me, please let me know. I'm, I'm happy to talk about whatever y'all want to talk about. So, 
All right, I'll leave it there. Thanks, guys.